Hey there YouTube, it's Renderer and today I'm going to run you through my workflow for building a render for an actual client. Alright, so you're just going to want to start with a model and if you don't have a model you need to make one. And then for the textures, I asked the client for the texture that they use on their box and they sent me this. So definitely use a tool called upscale.media, it's free right now. You basically just want to go upload your image and then you can basically double the resolution using AI. And then the other thing I always do now is use normal maps. And so if you want to make a normal map, just open up Photoshop, put your AI upscaled product texture into Photoshop and then open filter, 3D, generate normal map, and then go on a long walk while it bakes. And then one thing to keep in mind is if it looks sunken in, like indented, you're going to want to make sure that the invert height button is checked, right? Sometimes you want it indented. For me, I need it kind of raised. Just click OK and then save it as a PNG and use it as a normal map. So upon scrolling through Pinterest, I've seen a number of ideas that I like uh, that I'm going to just try to like implement little elements from and I'm kind of ready to get started. So I'm going to go over to Blender here. I'm going to split my screen vertically because I like having a side where I can focus on just the camera and then another side where I can do the working and build the scene. And then I think this is perhaps the most important part of my workflow, the most valuable add-on I have ever used. I pay about 70 or 76 something dollars a year for this uh, for this add-on called Blender Kit, and it's like Spotify for 3D renders. So basically get a huge library of models that are royalty free. Um, you don't need to credit the authors or anything. You pay for that via Blender Kit. And it has most useful models that you'll need, most useful textures that you'll need. It has scenes and HDRIs. So here I'm gonna go with I'm gonna add some rocks. Now I just need to kind of scatter the scene a little bit. So now that I have a number of rocks scattered around, I'm just gonna find a mountain. So now I want to add the package in the middle here. I'm gonna shrink it a little. And then I just need to put it there just so we can have something to focus on and we'll tweak it and make it look better here pretty soon. I just realized I haven't even saved this. And then it looks like there's a little bit too much of a jump between the rocks here and the background that's supposed to be super far away. So I think I'm just gonna drag in a rock. It's getting close. I still have to work on the lighting. So another big one I like to add, um, this significantly increases the render time, is some clouds. So we're trying to make it feel really high up. So using Blender Kit, I have a randomizing cloud. Thanks to whoever developed this one, this has been a lifesaver for me multiple times. Now I have some clouds in the background kind of suggesting like a very high altitude. Kind of make it so it covers the entire back. So then for lighting, I think I just need to draw a little bit of extra attention to the package because the orange light, while it looks great, is kind of taking a lot of the attention from what we're trying to sell here. We have a super shallow depth of field on the camera, so the focus is on the, the product. We have one fill light going on on the product and then our sunlight, which is part of a sky texture. We have an assortment of rocks that we added in with Blender Kit, a dark rough platform with a wave modifier on here to give it a ripple effect. And then we have that cloud in the background and then that picture of, of some mountains going on too. So this scene all in all was built, um, I wasn't even timing it, but it was about probably 30 to 50 minutes, so not super time consuming. All right, so I slightly adjusted the composition just to center it a little better, but here's the render. And now I'm going to come over to the compositing section. And then I just recently learned this, but if you press V a couple times, it gets smaller. And then if you do Alt middle mouse button, you can move it over. I don't know why that took me so long to learn, but here we are. Um, and then I can do a glare. I, I like to start with a glare and then a, a little bit of lens distortion I think looks amazing. So I hit fit just to make sure it doesn't uh, change the size of the picture too much. I'm gonna come over here and probably just do 0.2. Generally that's okay. Um, and then I think for the glare, I'll probably just go with a fog glow, uh, high quality as always and leave it at, uh, I'll probably go with size seven because I don't want it to bleed too much. The rest of the editing I do for my workflow is in Lightroom, so I will be jumping over to that. All right, so I've also added a particle system here, which shoots out 2,000 of these little tiny specks that kind of just hang out on the scene. It, it's nature, it's never that clean, so we need a little bit of debris kind of here, whether it's you know supposed to look like bugs or dirt or something. 
I think it just makes it look a little bit nicer. In fact, I might bump this up to 2700. And then the last thing I added here is a volumetric cloud. Basically, if you look at the shader editor for this, it is just a volume scatter node connected to the volume material output with a density of 0.01. Isotropic left the same. And then from here, I think we're ready to render. All right, so our render's done. I'm gonna save it and throw it into Premiere. So yeah, this is getting to the point where I would call it about complete and I think it is ready to be sent to the client. I often just make a few more tweaks. I even get up for about 20 minutes just to see if my opinion on something has changed after not seeing it for a while. But yeah, I'm pretty close to, to sending this on over and I think it's nice. So if there's any part of that process that you want more information on, just drop a comment and I will do my best to either reply or I can even make a video about it. I'm gonna aim to post a video a week, but other than that, if you enjoyed the video, please drop a like, it would help me out a lot and I'll see you next time.